Thank you so much for joining us this uh, morning for yet another installation of our discussion in the book of Colossians. I know God has been speaking to us in a very, very clear manner. Um, one of the things that I forgot to bring out yesterday about the wisdom is uh, because it's going to be connecting with what we are discussing today. In the book of Proverbs chapter number 7, and verse number four. Because today we are discussing about being filled with the knowledge of his will, yes, all wisdom, but then our concentration today is spiritual understanding. Spiritual understanding. Every time I read this particular scripture, especially bringing out the, cost, the concept of uh, understanding, it's not just the normal understanding that we are used to, but it is the understanding that is spiritual. Why spiritual understanding? Because when it comes to understanding, understanding establishes. Through wisdom, a house is built. Through understanding, it is established. Every time you see something that does not get established, the main missing component is the issue to do with understanding. Proverbs chapter number four, 7, verse number uh, 4 says, Say to wisdom, because I want to bring out a certain concept here, Say to wisdom, you are my sister, and call understanding your nearest kin. My goodness. Say to wisdom, you are my sister. This is now understanding speaking. Say to wisdom, you are my sister. And then call understanding my next of kin. There is the wisdom, then there is knowledge. What holds these two things together is understanding. When you have understanding and wisdom and lack knowledge, there is imbalance. When you have got wisdom and knowledge lacking understanding, there is no establishment. When you have got the knowledge of his will, knowledge and wisdom, then now what holds this thing together is understanding. And so he says, say to wisdom, you are my sister and call understanding my nearest kin. Why are we talking about spiritual understanding because in seeking uh, establishment we use the avenue called understanding for you to be established in life the avenue that you go through is called understanding for example whenever there is an interview for any job whenever there is an interview for any job the panelists will not be seeking to have only your qualifications as the merit criteria. No. They will not use that as your merit only. You may be qualified on paperwork, yes, because you have a degree, you have a master's, you have got six years of experience as they would have asked for and all that. But critically, what they are employing is not your papers. They are not hiring your papers, they are hiring your understanding. They will pay a fortune for your understanding. The day you start waning and degenerating in understanding, they will declare you redundant. Redundancy is based on understanding. Not just uh, maybe they, they are downsizing or they, they have decided to declare all of you redundant so that they fire you. No, I'm talking about when you're declared redundant while you're still qualified on paperwork, what are they declaring redundant? It's your understanding. Because probably there is a new phase of understanding that they have sought to work with that you no longer exhibit. And so, when you lack understanding, you are exposing yourself to redundancy. So, what is this understanding? Understanding is what holds everything together such that you can now, it is difficult to, to, to you, are, you are indispensable. Let me use that word carefully. 
your, if your level of understanding is on a certain level, uh, height, it is very difficult to get rid of you. Understanding. How does one understand, research, study? Daniel is a perfect example of a man possessing certain depth of understanding. He comes into a certain political dispensation and governance. If we are talking about the mountain of leadership and mountain of governance, Daniel forms the character study for us. Because this guy uh, has got a certain relevance in four regimes. One, he is relevant in the regime of Nebuchadnezzar. He is relevant during the days of Darius. He is relevant during the days of Cyrus. He is relevant during the days of Belshazzar. All these regimes employ Daniel's understanding. Daniel makes a very interesting statement about his uh, pathway towards gaining understanding. And he says this in chapter 9, verse number 2. In the first day year of the reign of, uh, in the first day of his reign, that is talking about Darius, Daniel says this, Daniel understood by the books. Daniel understood by the books. That means understanding comes through vast reading, understanding comes through vast research, understanding comes through vast wealth of experience. Lacking understanding is a big risk of any individual who will want to scale up the heights of relevance. Lacking understanding is very risky if you are going to scale up the heights of relevance. The lack of understanding is a clear indicator that you are bordering on you being swept off the field. Because people can run you out of town when you lack understanding. How do we know that you lack understanding? When you are no longer fresh. <laughs> when you are stale, you are lacking understanding. Because for you to stay relevant, keep the freshness aspect of your life. How do you maintain freshness? By staying in the books. Understanding. So he says, I am praying for you that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will. Knowledge, all wisdom, yes. Number three, spiritual understanding. These three things will attract a certain outcome. Now, this is where we are going to verse 10. These three things will attract certain behavioral patterns and response mechanism. The first one is that you, you, it says that you may walk worthy of the Lord. That you may walk worthy of the Lord. You may walk worthy of the Lord. There is the walking worthy of the calling. Okay? There is walking worthy of the calling. In other words, you have esteemed the purpose for which you have been arrested for and you are walking and living to the expectation of that particular call. And then there is the walking worthy of the Lord. In other words, you are seeking to please the one who enlisted you into that journey. You are seeking to please the one who has enlisted you in that journey. So you are no longer walking because of the calling, the purpose, but you are also now walking worthy of the one who has enlisted you to that particular path. Because sometimes we esteem the call, we esteem the purpose, we esteem what we are doing. That is when we end up becoming human doings and not becoming human beings. We are not becoming what we are doing. But then on this other side, walking worthy of the uh, Lord, it means you are more conscious of the one who has enlisted you. In other words, you are seeking to please God more than pleasing yourself with the call. My goodness. That you may walk worthy. What is this walking? It's a lifestyle. What is this walking? It is a lifestyle style that is reflecting the one who has enlisted you. Paul says, follow me as I follow Christ. In other words, pattern your life after mine as I also pattern my life after the one who has called me. That you may walk worthy of the Lord. Not just walking, 
but also your desire is that you start pleasing him. Your desire is that you start pleasing him. And when you start pleasing him, you become fruitful. These are the outcomes of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. You walk worthy of the Lord, you start pleasing him, and then the third one is that you start being productive. Most of the time we run into productivity. We want to be productive to eliminate the guilt of not appearing to be responsible. But the end goal should be, who are you pleasing in your fruitfulness? Because if you are not pleasing the one who has enlisted you in that particular path, then you are likely, you are likely be doing it for your own personal selfish gain and ambition or selfish self-aggrandizement, so to say. That you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing Him, being fruitful in every good work. There are people who are fruitful in bad work. But on this one, you should be fruitful in every good work. Whenever there is an interplay of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, you walk worthy of the Lord, you please the Lord, you become productive, fully productive in every good work, and then you start increasing in the knowledge of God. You see now, knowledge is now upgrading itself. It was not just knowledge, the insightful aspect, it is now knowledge of God the experiential understanding of who God is. Who do men say that I am? Peter receives this consciousness messianically that he says, it, you are the Messiah, you are the Christ. And it's like flesh and blood did not reveal that to you. The technology that has been used here is that there is now a certain fusion of knowledge that you have that is both experiential and realistic because you are living with me. I'm here with you. You are now interacting with what you have already made as a confession. And then he says, upon this rock, I will build my church. Upon this revelation, I will establish my church. Fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. Once you start increasing in the knowledge of God, the next line says this, strengthened with all might. Now you start gaining access to strength. You now start gaining access to strength. What is this kind of strength that we are talking about? Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. There is the strength that you now have the joy of the Lord becoming your strength, but then you start operating in the power of his might, not your might, of his might. Able to do what otherwise is humanly impossible. You're operating now from the scale of the knowledge of his will, being filled with wisdom, being filled with all spiritual understanding, walking worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, bearing begin to be fruitful and then you start uh, uh, you start uh, increasing in the knowledge of God and then strengthen with all might according to his glorious power according to his glorious power this is one of the most interesting studies that you can ever have the book of Colossians I pray that you will begin seeing the manifestation of all these three things in your life and then you will start now walking worthy of the Lord, pleasing Him, being strengthened with all might, increasing in the knowledge of God. Eternal Father, we thank you because you have given us this as our heritage. Release the kind of grace that helps us walk with this kind of reality in our lives here on earth as we anticipate the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, and we bless you in Jesus' name. See you again tomorrow as we continue with this particular discussion.